This video will show you how to operate a batch calorimeter. That is, we are measuring the energy released by a chemical system. You will be mixing two different chemicals which will give off heat. You will measure the amount of energy that is released by that and do thermochemical uh, calculations on that data. The calorimeter is a Dewar flask or a thermos flask. It sits here and it should sit on top of a stirrer plate. You are monitoring the temperature using a, a laptop. These are somewhat ancient. They're not quite as old as you, but they're getting on that way. And what you don't recognize, um, you'll recognize a mouse, but you won't recognize this particular hardware. This is a thermocouple which will be placed inside the calorimeter and it goes through this box which is technically called a go link which uh, disconnects there and we have here a USB port key which actually fits in the back of the um, laptop. There we go. It's now recognized we've got that and you are looking for Logger Pro 3.6. So double click on that, it will fire up. And the software is smart enough to realize that you have plugged in a thermocouple as opposed to say a pH probe. And it will pull up a temperature as a function of time graph uh, ready to go. While we're waiting for that, let's talk about the calorimeter itself. The calorimeter is just a Dewar flask. You should have a magnetic stir bar inside it. And when it's actually operating, we put a lid on it so that there's minimal heat loss to the environment here. We're actually going to calibrate the calorimeter using hot and cold water. We know how much energy it takes to heat up a gram of water, 4.18 joules per Kelvin. However, we're not sure how much energy it takes to heat up the calorimeter, and that's what you need the calibration for. We will be using um, hot and cold water. We'll use 400 mils of each. So first thing we do is it's just room temperature water. We've got 400 mils of cold water here, and I'll just pour that into the calorimeter. Turn the stirrer on. It's actually uh, mixing there. And by this point, this is now ready to go. We have hot plates around, and you should heat up some water to a reasonably high temperature. It doesn't need to be boiling hot. Temperature of a decent cup of coffee is good enough. And so I've heated this. Oh, rather, one of my assistants has heated this. and measure out 400 mils of hot water. So, to start off, I need to know how warm this is, and then I will measure how cold that is, and then I will pour them in together. This starts off by, where is my cursor? Collect. And the high temperature You hold it here until you're pretty sure you've got a steady temperature. Sixty point three appears to be pretty close to stable. Put it in the cold water. And this will go down to room temperature. And that's stabilizing at 24.4. Mix the two. Make sure everything has come out. Put the lid on. Put the thermocouple through the hole. And wait until you get a steady temperature. 
So here we have the high temperature of the hot water. This temperature down here is the cold water. And we've now got a pretty steady temperature there. It's 40.7. And that is the temperature of the mix. Now, you will find, in fact, that that is not the, the arithmetic mean of the two. And that's because you took some energy to heat the calorimeter from the cold temperature, 24, up to 40.7. And you use this data to calibrate your calorimeter. You do this three times so that you're sure that you've got some decent data. And now that's finished. And so I click on the red button for stop. And you can print this by finding the print icon over here. And the printer is over at the other side of the lab. And you can get a hard copy of this. The other thing you will probably want is to collect the data and collect all the data. There we go. And copy, control C. And at this point, you want a spreadsheet program. This particular program calls it uh, LibreOffice Calc. You may have a computer that has Excel on it. But fire up a spreadsheet and copy, just cut and paste, the material, control V. OK. And there we have temperature as a function of time. And you can save this and eventually export it into a USB key that you can then take home and crunch the numbers with. So that's it for calibrating the calorimeter. It's now time to actually do some chemistry and mix some chemicals that are going to heat, uh, produce heat. To do this, let's uh, go back to LogaPro. And now that I've printed it, I can start, get a new. I don't want to keep that. And so we're ready now to start with a new run. At this point, turn the heater off. Take this out. The waste from this particular experiment can be just thrown down the sink. This is only water. But when you are mixing the sulfuric, excuse me, sodium hydroxide and acid, which would be either HCl or acetic acid, all you're producing is slightly acidic, slightly salty water. So again, the wastes from this experiment can go down the sink with running water. Let's prepare that and get ready for an acid-solid reaction. The acid that you will need is in cubitainers here in Wahlberg 203. You'll be using 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. So take the appropriate amount that you need. And please be very sure that you turn it off before you leave. Otherwise, we have a flood. You'll be weighing out the solid. And because the solid is the limiting reagent in this reaction, you do need to use an analytical balance here. I'm going to be using magnesium for this example, but you may be weighing out something else. Take a weighing boat, put it on the pan of the analytical balance, and push the tear bar to set the weight to zero. Once that comes up, then weigh out the appropriate amount of magnesium. And again, as long as it's within 10% of the target weight, it doesn't matter what you do get, as long as you write down all four significant digits in your lab notebook. So close the side doors of the balance, wait until the circle goes away, and this weight is now stable at 0 0.5360. We'll now take this to the calorimeter. We're back here now at the calorimeter. I've got the 250 mils of hydrochloric acid that I measured out earlier and the magnesium solid. The first thing to do is put all of the hydrochloric acid into the calorimeter. Now, it's at room temperature, so it won't be warming up. Here is the thermocouple. Now, if I put it through the hole in the lid, it's too short. It won't actually reach the hydrochloric acid. So I just put it directly into the Dewar flask. 
turn the stirrer on, so I've got motion happening there. And at this point, we can start collecting. Click on the green button. And this is recording 21.6 degrees fairly consistently. I'm now ready to start the reaction. And to do that, I put all of the magnesium in, tap to make sure it's all out, put the lid on, and watch the reaction. It's taking a while, but the temperature is going up slightly. This one is not as fast as um, just mixing acid and base, or indeed hot and cold water. So we'll need to wait for this one until we reach a maximum temperature. All right, this has now come to a stable temperature. It's taken a few minutes to do that. So we stop it and then auto scale. You see it's a much, uh, quite a long slope, but it does get up to a high temperature. At this point, what you do is send this graph to the printer and then um, highlight all of the data, C control C to copy it, then drop it into a spreadsheet program, and then later on copy it onto your USB key. And that is how you collect data for a magnesium and acid, or a solid and acid calorimetry run. Once you have finished this experiment, again, all of your uh, finished solutions can go down the sink with lots of running water. Don't forget to turn the computer off. The um, hardware for the links actually lives in a box in these drawers here. The computer goes back to your TA. And that is how you collect your data for experiment T2, which is batch calorimetry using a solid unknown.